Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Aaron Barredo, and I want to start off by thanking you for your, taking your time out of your busy schedules to learn more about the Advanced Work Packaging System. I'm a research assistant at Concord Project Technologies, and today I'm serving as moderator for our discussion. At Concord, we're dedicated to the belief that predictability thinking is the solution to helping project organizations deliver more profitable projects and programs. To achieve this, we work alongside our clients to empower their people with the knowledge and tools they need to deliver on budget and on time every time. For those of you taking notes, today's topic is called Advanced Work Packaging Fundamentals. And the speaker is Concord CEO and one of the premier experts in the industry, Olfa Hamdi. We're excited because this talk is the first in a series of free webinars the Concord Academy will be hosting, all of which will be aimed at sharing expert knowledge, leveraging predictability thinking and best practices, but most importantly, they're about you. Putting people first is at the heart of our company, culture, and this series is our small way of doing our part to invest in your personal and professional growth. Before we get into the topic, there are a few housekeeping details we need to address. We want to engage with you throughout the presentation, and to do that, you will need to know how to access the chat function of the webinar platform. At the bottom of the webinar application window, you will see a chat function bubble labeled with the word chat. When you click on it, a conversation sidebar will open. Before you write anything, make sure your message is being sent to everyone. We ask that you add any questions you have about the message into the chat, as you see in the example. And at the end, we will do our best to answer as many as possible. Now, we would love to know where everyone is from, so please type in the chat your name and location. COVID-19 has impacted all of our lives, and we want to take a moment to address some health and work-related tips. For health and safety, let's talk about cleaning. Recently, I heard that your work keyboard is one of the dirtiest objects you interact with on a daily basis. The stat is pretty grotesque, so Google it at your own risk. But with that in mind, we wanted to recommend a list of three other areas you should be keeping clean to keep healthy. First, your car, and more specifically, the steering wheel, door handles, and shifter. Second, the entrance doorknob to your home, and last, your keyboard and mouse. And for our work tip, straight from the Harvard Business Review, you need to leave work at the door even when you're working from home. This is all about defining the difference between work mode and personal mode. In a time where we are physically close to our families, we want to make sure this is true emotionally and personally as well. So what can you do? Create a routine that eases you into work mode, making sure it is something you are comfortable doing every day. For example, have a quick workout or yoga session, shower, and then sit at your computer to start the workday. Then, block off your work hours completely, especially accounting for meetings and important calls. Finally, create a wrap-up routine that will always mean the workday is over. These small changes will help ensure the rest of your family can also learn to live with your new at-home working situation. Earlier, we mentioned that this webinar series is a service of the Concord Academy, a knowledge-focused initiative of our company. We envision the Academy being a tool to help people achieve the greatest potential for their careers. It is also our way to provide project-specific support and company transformation to organizations wanting to get a step over the competition. We can accomplish this because of our dedication to providing the highest quality of service and our willingness to meet the changes of needing, the needs of changing times. We have transitioned to providing our enterprise training remotely, making it an on-demand service for projects and companies. This focus on excellence has led to highly acclaimed record of our training services. In two years, Concord has trained over 300 AWP champions around the globe. Each person leaves our workshop with a solid understanding of AWP, and our experts have been rated 4.85 stars out of five 
for the service they provide to participants. We want to do our best to extend that service to you. So as part of attending today's webinar, you will be receiving these additional free resources to continue developing your AWP knowledge base. Our, a our website also has a number of tools to walk you through our, your AWP and predictability thinking journey. And I would like to show you where you can find those resources now. Welcome to the Concord Project Technologies website. We're going to take a look at the most important resources you can access online by going to cconglobal.com. First, we'll look at the Concord Academy under the training tab. At the core of the Academy are our foundational and custom training classes that cover the most critical areas of modern project management and management. Each offering comes with a set of courses or they can be adjusted according to your needs. You can explore more about our foundational or custom training classes by clicking on the button. Additionally, we also provide one-on-one -on -one coaching and public workshops. Interested individuals can fill out this form to learn more. Now, we will go to the AWP Insights tab this section is full of free resources to help build your knowledge base on your own. The fundamentals articles are useful in grasping the principles of AWP. And we also share insight articles from case studies, like the one we did with Rosenden Electric. This was an R&D investigation into the AEC industry. Lastly, you can access all free print publications by going to the Velocity Print Edition tab. And to stay up to date on the release of new publications, make sure to subscribe so that you can receive them by email. Thank you. Now, it's time for today's presentation by Ofa Hamdi. Ms. Hamdi is a global expert in the strategic construction-driven planning and execution of capital projects. She's an American-trained engineer, inventor, and Silicon Valley entrepreneur who founded the Advanced Work Packaging Institute before co-founding Concord Project Technologies in 2016. Olfa is a recognized international expert in the field of project management and a credited co-author of the three-volume industry bible on advanced work packaging implementation. She led multiple audit missions of capital projects while working with independent project analysis. She holds a Master of Science in Capital Project Management from the University of Texas at Austin, a Master of Science in Engineering from Ecole Centrale de Lille, and a graduate degree in Alternative Dispute Resolution for Construction Disputes from Texas School of Law. Please note, this presentation and its content are protected by copyright laws prohibiting the unauthorized use of its proprietary content. Ulfa, the space is yours. Thank you so much, Aaron. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, I'm really, really happy to be here today with all of you. Thank you for being uh, supporters of Concord and of the work we do on advanced work packaging as well. Uh, we started with this webinar. So this webinar in a way is a uh, introduction to advanced work packaging and mainly the key principles driving it. Um, I wanna get started actually by um, mentioning this. Uh, when we talk about designing a construction plan without accounting for constraints, uh, it is like planning to climb Everest without accounting for the cold and basically failure is inevitable. So please think about that a little bit and your approach to why you would need advanced work packaging for your companies. 
It is a matter of looking at the constraints. It is a, ma it, it is a matter of looking at the various elements that do impact execution, but we will, we're, we will be doing that early in time in a matter that is advanced in time. And that is where the word advanced comes from when it comes to advanced work packaging. So in this presentation, I wanna cover four key questions uh, that we will go through in a um, summarized manner, um, mostly because of time. But the first one is really what problems does AWP solve? The second question is how is work structured in the AWP system? Uh, what is the path of construction? And then how do I get started with AWP? So um, a, lot of, a lot of companies, um, when we look at the advanced work packaging system or the way companies are actually approaching advanced work packaging, um, we would want to look also at the history of the industry. You know, why did the industry start with advanced work packaging? How did it actually even uh, develop it? And primarily, there are a number of issues that the industry was motivated by uh, to get to the point of developing and implementing advanced work packaging. What we need and what I would like to invite you to think about is while I'm presenting those issues, think about what are your issues that would lead you to identify the need for advanced work packaging and an upgrade to your overall, overall work packaging and planning systems. Uh, the reason I mentioned that and why is that important? Because based on our experience, it is really, really important that you present the why to anybody uh, who is um, getting, you know, encountering advanced work packaging in your implementation journey. So the, the, the very first issue that, um, you know, most basically is driving the advanced work packaging implementation is really the issue of labor productivity in the construction industry. Um, many of you, I'm sure, are quite familiar with this chart, which is basically showing the difference between labor productivity for construction compared to other sectors. And as you can see, construction is not just stagnating, but when it comes to labor, it is actually even maybe declining. Uh, of course, you know, if we look at the grand, more granular data around those for different sectors, so industrial construction versus, let's say, commercial or residential construction, we will see differences. But the overall trend for the, for the construction industry is that we haven't seen at the macro level that, that peak, basically, in labor productivity, as many other industries have seen. Now, why is this still important? Obviously, because productivity is correlated with safety when it comes to labor, uh, but it is also the fact that uh, labor productivity accounts one of, on about one of the major uh, line items in our construction budgets. So that's you know, a lot of cost when it comes to going into labor. An improvement in that is gonna actually help, uh, obviously help us achieve more predictable projects, but also more productive projects. And so the way we look within the advanced work packaging system, uh, the way we look at uh, labor productivity, we look at it from a time spent on tools. And the data that has been available within the uh, COA and CII studies on labor productivity in the petrochemical industry is that only 30%, 37 of the time uh, by one uh, crew uh, or one uh, worker is spent on tools. As you can see, the rest of the day or the rest of the shift is actually spent either, you know, wasted in time being uh, waiting, waiting for instructions, waiting for material. Uh, it is spent in movement uh, where the labor would actually take equipment, move equipment from one place to the other. Um, and it is also spent, surprisingly enough, into planning. Uh, so what we're talking about here is that the objective of the advanced work packaging is that we get to a point where we improve this labor productivity uh, on tool time. And there are cases, numerous cases, st case studies in the industry from those, some of them are public. Uh, this one is available on one of the um, uh, major owner company sites uh, in, uh, in Nigeria, where they actually improved labor on, on, on tool time by 10% by the mere implementation of extra, what we call work phase planning and work packaging uh, capabilities on site. The second metric that we would look at uh, to see, you know, whether advanced work packaging is actually helping or not, and one of the key issues that we'd like to solve as well is actually what we call supervision time. Now, um, the supervision rate or supervision time, uh, and that is the time spent by your direct supervisor in the field, uh, actually supervising the work, is correlated with the safer, more productive work. 
Now, if you know that overall, on average, in, to the industry, only 15% of the day is actually spent on, um, on supervision, uh, there is definitely a lot to be improved. Um, one clear area that we could, that the advanced work packaging system helps act upon is actually this area of planning, the 20% of the supervisor's day into planning. And um, by improving the, uh, implementing the advanced work packaging system and by improving uh, the work packaging capability of your project, your goal is to enable your direct line supervision to spend way more time directly supervising the crew, providing them with safety, uh, in, uh, you know, safety instructions, providing them feedback, uh, making decisions on the go, and that is what leads to more productive sites. So I've, I've actually worked on this when I um, uh, started my research at the University of Texas at Austin years ago. And I was looking actually at those key indicators on, on site um, from indicators of poor construction, from recordable incidents to poor labor productivity to low direct supervision time and overall unpredictable construction, where I'm sure many of you uh, worry about the issue of actually just being in a crisis mode when it comes to the phase of construction. And these actually, um, I, found, I found out in my research across many, many projects across the globe, so it's, it is a global issue, that they are generally correlated and could be traced back to issues during definition, during the early phases, not just detailed engineering, uh, because we consider detailed engineering part of execution, but actually early on in the definition. And so some of these root causes uh, range from scope changes, execution decision changes, uh, but also poor sequencing, uh, a missing capability of solid planning that is construction driven, definitely turnover of team members and inadequate or poor definition, uh, but as well as actually, you know, some of the other issues that are related to late engineering. So speaking of late engineering, this is one of the maybe less obvious ways uh, associated with the benefits and the impact of advanced work packaging, but based on the piloting and our experience, this is one of the first areas that we should see benefits of, especially when you're implementing advanced work packaging for the first time. And that is your engineering duration and predictability of your engineering phase. Uh, basically comparing your estimated duration with your um, uh, actual duration and comparing your sequencing of engineering and how it helps construction. Uh, I'm citing here some data showing that we're actually struggling with this in the industry. Uh, uh, IPA actually shares that slip in engineering uh, is now approaching an average of 40% on small and large projects. Uh, and it is one of the most serious problems facing capital projects in the process industries. And that is not just timely engineering, but also accurate engineering. As a matter of fact, uh, CII has conducted a study that actually shows that sources of field rework are actually driven by um, uh, at least 33% of them. They come from design errors and um, other issues associated with design as well. Other AWP documented benefit that actually lead to the case of why you are implementing advanced work packaging include uh, actually fewer change orders, and I will explain that down the road when I talk about the path of construction of the correlation with that. Uh, definitely for contractor companies with more and more owner companies actually adopting advanced work packaging and the principles of advanced work packaging, also part of their contractual requirements, uh, that's going to mean more business for a lot of the companies, especially when it comes to renewing working relationships on a lot of those projects. Um, we'll talk about actually with documented benefits associated with improved human resources management. And what we call, what we mean by that is the, uh, the improvement of the staffing aspect of capital projects and looking at the various components, especially on those functions that we tend to assume. Uh, and these are the interface and coordination functions. And of course, stronger bottom line, because at the end of the day, predictability is about obviously achieving the uh, business objectives of projects, so the commercial obje objectives of projects, and by having more predictable plans, uh, both in cost, in terms of cost and schedule, by having safer projects, we are definitely uh, respecting and strengthening the bottom line for your, for your companies. 
So how, how is the, the advanced work packaging uh, system structured? So I'm gonna look at the breakdown of the packages and I'm gonna look at the relationship to the stage gate system. Now, uh, please note that, okay, primarily when I'm presenting the system, um, a lot of it comes from our knowledge into the process industry construction. So industrial construction. And for that, the AWP system is, you know, has been piloted many times. We actually understand it very well. Uh, my company, we, we've, we've worked actually even in a more extensive way into developing handbooks and, and implementing them and supporting actually full round implementation on advanced work packaging. But please know that if you are from a, you know, another industry, let's say the AEC industry, commercial construction, maybe a less conventional or less industrial construction. Um, we've actually have been, have been looking into AWP, into let's say data center constructions and healthcare facilities. Uh, this breakdown may actually need to be tweaked, but keep an open mind uh, at the end of the day in our approach to the advanced work packaging system. What we really mostly care about is going back into the principles and adopting them to your system. So, the advanced work packaging breakdown is really about the logic of construction. So your very first breakdown of your scope um, and of your logic of construction has to follow the way you intend to execute construction. And that intention or that plan into how you're going to break down your construction is the driver to defining your work breakdown structure. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the you know, most widespread ways of breaking down construction based on the advanced work packaging system is to actually break it down in terms of areas. So we start by defining what we call a construction work area. The definition of these are, happen in a very collaborative manner. It's driven by construction and it takes into account uh, the specificities of your site, the constraints of the site, uh, the specificities of your nature of construction, the type of equipment you're installing, the space you're actually getting into installing, the geography of your project. This definition of areas, as you can see here uh, with this particular area uh, delineated in yellow, is actually one of the most critical steps into the advanced work packaging system. So you don't get these areas right and you don't get the buy-in around those areas, you don't, you don't have a good advanced work packaging system. Uh, once we have those areas defined, we move to the next level, and that is distinguishing the disciplines inside each areas. And so in a way, it's like we're defining a project inside the project. Uh, the first thing we do there is by identifying the various disciplines, as you can see here, let's say piping within this area. And all of that scope is actually considered a, an engineering work package. Um, or basically all the engineering associated with that piping is considered an engineering work package. Now, the engineers build this engineering work package based on really two major considerations. Number one, they need to respect the scope under that boundary, under that area, in defining the deliverables, the drawings, the isometrics under that package. And number two, they need to respect the timeline by which that package is needed so that a construction work package could be executed. Now, a construction work package is that very same scope of work for that specific discipline um, executed, obviously, in the field. So we would actually, in preparing the construction work package, we would define information associated with, you know, safety, scaffolding, all sorts of construction-related elements. Now, why do we do this breakdown? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, we're looking to create, by the construction you know, basically discipline contractors or the construction general contractor, he, he or she is looking to create those small installation work packages that could be handed to a crew, which we call IWPs, that uh, the crew can use that to install the work and do the work in a productive manner and an uninterrupted manner that actually respects the overall flow of construction. So as a summary of all of this, this breakout of areas then disciplines where we actually have a construction work package that feeds it, that is uh, in a way cor that corresponds to an engineering work package and an engineering work package that feeds the construction work package. The objective is to end up with the installation work packages, which are broken down uh, so that the crew could, you know, let's say in about a week worth of work, I've seen actually less and I've seen more depending on the size of your project and the nature of the work and the nature of the discipline but it is up to you within your site 
uh, and within your construction experience to define that, 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 that size in a way. Now, with that breakdown, uh, what happens is that we translate that breakdown into a work breakdown structure, into a numbering structure that actually is propagated across the entire documentation of the project, from procurement to engineering to field to all sorts of documentation that feeds into these packages. If you look at the a standard, let's say, you know, the stage gate system, the way we look at projects, okay, you know, we, stand, we, we start by a definition phase, early definition phase, uh, sometimes called FEL2, maybe FEL1, 2, uh, and then we move into the feed phase, the front end engineering and design phase. Uh, that is also called FEL3 by certain um, uh, terminologies. It is also called, you may refer to it by stage three. Um, I mean, all companies have different terminologies for this. Uh, and the terminology is really not important as long as you associate the advanced work packaging components with the, the, the timeline of your, of your project delivery system. Now, advanced work packaging really works uh, and the advanced part really works when in at least in stage three, and that's your feed, early on, you start building your path of construction. Now, your path of construction is actually your plan and your breakdown and those areas where everybody has bought into that, including operations. Now, let me tell you this. We receive a lot of requests sometimes where people come and say, we, I want to implement advanced work packaging. We ask them, what stage are you? They say, We're, we started detailed engineering already. We don't think that's the right place to start advanced work packaging. It's too late. It is really important in identifying your pilots and moving forward with this so that you can upgrade your systems and become more predictable that you start the advanced work packaging system into phase three, where you start delivering the path of construction. As you can see here, when we get through gate three, and that's generally where projects get authorized, what's called full funds authorization, full investment decision, you know, gate three stage, I mean, um, all companies, they have various terminologies for that. But by the time your project is authorized and you have you finished your feed package, that's basically when the award happens to the EPC contractor. That's when we start creating the engineering work packages and the construction work packages, and we start embarking into execution. Now, the process of developing the installation work packages, and these are the very small packages that we give to the crew, that process is called work phase planning. And I'm, maybe many of you have heard the terminology before, what is work phase planning? Well, work phase planning actually is, let's say, the, the early version of advanced work packaging. So that's the process of creating those small packages into the field, managing them, and clearing the constraints, and helping the crew and the supervision have a more productive site. Uh, there are many ways of doing that. I've actually seen people combine this with the last planner system and all the good practices that come from the lean management system, the lean construction system, and that is okay. All of that fits into the work phase planning process. The advanced work packaging process is taking that early on and doing the early work into packaging and developing your construction work uh, through a path of construction that is solid, developed, taken into consideration the various constraints into the project. Now, please know that not all companies or industries or construction sectors will apply advanced work packaging in the same way. As I mentioned, we work with multiple industries, diverse industries. Our tradition, which advanced work packaging is getting to become a tradition in the industrial sector, has seen certain variations when it comes to uh, the AEC industry, for example. So what is most important in approaching advanced work packaging is that you pay attention to the principles driving advanced work packaging and opt for principled project management and engage in what we call predictability thinking. I've actually, you know, um, from the very, very early pilots and research to the, you know, the work we've done right now, I really, really made, I mean, and along with the people inside the company, we made the strategic decision on, of expanding uh, the way we approach projects and the way we approach advanced work packaging into a more comprehensive methodology called predictability thinking because you can actually decide to apply advanced work packaging, but if you have poor project management, if you have not thought about your culture, how your company is influenced, your contracting strategy, and all of those elements, you may actually fail. And so to ensure success, please engage into predictability thinking. And in that, I actually wanna mention those principles that I would like to invite you to think about 
And we, we go through these in detail, and I hope I'll have the chance to go through these in detail with all of you in another occasion. But please keep in mind that these principles are the real driver behind the structure uh, of the advanced work packaging. Number one is thinking with the end in mind. And what that means is that if you do not have the right people and the right expertise early on to envision your construction and envision what is gonna impact your construction, it doesn't matter if you break it down into packages and create a numbering structure. What really matters is the process and the input into this. And maybe that's what makes our industry awesome, actually, it is still, you know, it's a people industry, really. So if you have a really solid construction manager or you have a project manager who's really good at seeing the gaps and bringing the right people, you have a much better chance at succeeding, um, you know, than, than when you don't have that. And so please keep that thinking in mind. It's a principle of the advanced work packaging system. A couple other principles are actually associated with construction-driven engineering and planning. And I will have to mention this, that culturally speaking and process speaking, uh, some of the people that take on most of the efforts when it comes to the advanced work packaging system are the engineers. And so, you know, we tend to assume that, okay, engineers that need to do this, but actually it is a big change for engineering to start packaging their drawings and making a number of assumptions and designing, you know, in addition to designing by system, taking into account the construction thinking, that is a change to engineering. So that principle uh, need to be incorporated and driven. Um, there is definitely the alignment of procurement with the path of construction. And this area alone is actually a, a big area that you need to think about. And not all companies are the same. If procurement is done by the owner, if it's done by the, by the EPC, if it's done by a third party, maybe if it's a combination of both, if expediting is needed, if not, I mean, all of those elements, you need to think about them in aligning with the advanced work packaging system. Definitely your work breakdown structure needs to be aligned with the logical construction driven philosophy. And so it's not a good idea to keep a numbering structure that doesn't fit with the advanced work packaging numbering structure. You need to align both and adopt a one single work breakdown structure for the project. Um, other elements that are associated with the principles are constraints management. Definitely that's a key practice. Uh, and honestly, the way we approach advanced work packaging implementation, implementation we really don't care what you call it. Some people want to put a label around, you know, um, you know certain you know, features or, or, or uh, lean oriented or no, it's work phase, of, work phase planning oriented. It really doesn't matter what you call it, whatever you're comfortable with, as long as it's constraint management, as long as you have the resources and the processes and the ways to actually identify constraints and solve them and produce constraint free packages. And finally, you know, I'll mention, I'll talk about leadership overall and disciplined collaboration. And that is what comes with the culture of accountability in our industry. Um, and so, you know, when we help companies pilot advanced work packaging, sometimes we encounter projects where even the culture of identifying roles and responsibilities is not there. Everybody assumes, you know, uh, functions, uh, people wear too many hats uh, and one of the main things to on how projects actually fail are associated with not identifying who does what into the advanced work packaging system. So advanced work packaging is a set of tools and tactics. I would like to invite you to adopt the predictability thinking, which is an operational paradigm that underpins advanced work packaging. That is principle driven approach to thinking about capital projects beyond tools and tactics but to actually understand a transformational change through the project, you can actually see a transformation in the culture of collaboration within your project team. I wanna take a little bit of time here and explain to you what is a path of construction, because this is a key deliverable that tends to be forgotten uh, in the way we, um, you know, advanced work packaging is being taught and, and uh, written about into the industry. Uh, this is a key deliverable. Um, and as a matter of fact, uh, the owners we've worked with and also contractors we've worked with, uh, even discipline contractors, as a matter of fact, they added this path of construction as a deliverable, even to the required deliverables at the, let's say the approval gates uh, or at your own internal assurance gates. Um, and this path of construction documents, literally looking at it will tell you whether the project is gonna be predictable or not. 
And so I mentioned this earlier, the path of construction is actually that deliverable that comes with the visual representation of your areas or of your breakdown that underlines basically your logic of construction and that connects engineering and procurement and operations and the various constraints into your construction plan. So the timing for this deliverable to be defined early on is actually in feet. Uh, now, if you are, let's say, a, a, a discipline contractor or an EPC contractor and you got on board after the feed package was complete, is it late? Well, it's not late as long as you have not started detailed engineering. So uh, it's a good opportunity to align, you know, the EPC work with the feed work or the definition work or the early work in that award stage or prior to award, as a matter of fact, in the in the in the bidding stage that's a good opportunity to actually come up with a path of construction although it's late it may take a lot of time uh, but it is worth doing it because it's just an investment so here's just a visual of uh, you know a component of the path of construction and its breakdown of areas where you literally take your plot plan and you divide in those areas taking into consideration your logic of construction and even the order and the sequence of installation now, I, I really wanted to insist on who gets involved into the path of construction development. Well, definitely the project team. Uh, well, I, I would like to mention that actually business gets developed, uh, involved into the path of construction. And I'll emphasize this because your project sponsor generally tend to, uh, obviously his, part of his major role is identifying trade-offs, cost and schedule trade-offs, especially the major ones. Well, in building your path of construction, sometimes you might have a very good idea into, you know, that would save time, but you know what, it costs more. Well, the project is actually cares, you know, is, is, is limited to a certain budget and, you know, is cost driven uh, rather than uh, being uh, schedule driven. And so, well, that discussion, that alignment has to happen. Should we go for it or not? Um, definitely engineering needs to be involved. As a matter of fact, engineering as a, you know, in, in, in helping construction and the construction lead into that uh, path of construction development, they are a major component and stakeholder into this. Uh, procurement as well, they provide input and they take the output of the path of construction and translate it to their own uh, procurement sequencing. And then finally, especially if you're doing work on a site, let's say, you know, revamp work, uh, site-based work, you definitely need the final input and alignment with the process commissioning and operations people um, to ensure that you're actually doing the right thing. And this involves work that is either done entirely, you know, you know, um, interfacing with turnaround, but also non-turnaround work. So please do not make that distinction. Get, especially on site-based projects, get operations to review your path of construction um, as well. So, I would like to mention that the quality of the path of construction is an indicator of the likelihood of success of your project in terms of predictability of outcomes. Now, how do you get started with advanced work packaging? Um, I wanted to share this research with you, which was um, published by CII about the various journeys on advanced work packaging. And I would like to emphasize this because through our, you know, through Concord's work helping clients um, pilot and uh, start an advanced work packaging implementation, it is a journey. Um, this is not a tool that you procure and buy and now we're advanced work packaging uh, compliant or now we're doing AWP. Um, and I would like to actually mention for especially contractors that tend to be involved in any bidding where let's say qualification questions are asked about advanced work packaging, it's, it's really not a good idea to say you're doing it when you're not doing it. Uh, because more and more owners are mature about this and they can identify when somebody's actually mature or not in AWP. The right way of approaching this is looking at it as a journey, identifying your gaps and defining a plan to get you to the best practice on some of the key components and then showing that there is the willingness actually and the leadership and the motivation and the resources to get to that predictable outcome. And through that transformation, there is nothing better than a win-win situation, right? Where people are working collaboratively on a construction project independently of the contracting strategy to achieve success. I actually mentioned this like um, times ago, I'm actually, you know, I'm a soccer fan, but I tend to say if your team loses, doesn't matter if you were a good player, 
um, or you know you had great moves you know uh, we lost and so it's the same thing for project you know if engineering does well it doesn't matter if the project ended up being a mess uh, what we care about is success and everybody will take the credit and I, I added this information here for people to actually know about some of the metrics because that's a recurrent uh, and frequent question uh, about you know what to expect please know that these are indicative so every company is different. Uh, I've seen companies that from the very first implementation, they really make the project on time. Um, but I've seen also projects where they're slightly in delay, um, but you know, it is definitely a learning process. So where to get started on advanced work packaging? I, I like this quote from Albert Einstein and um, that says, assumptions are made and most assumptions are wrong. So I can tell you, I've spent years developing and researching about advanced work packaging. Then when I started piloting advanced work packaging, as a matter of fact, I, I realized that there were assumptions I was making that were wrong and we needed to adjust and improve. And I'm quite sure that until today in our journeys, you know, looking at advanced work packaging for, uh, you know, site-based projects, looking at advanced work packaging for um, you know, um, uh, new industries. I mean, recently for, for about a year, we've been working on looking at AWP into the AEC industry and working with clients around that. We just realized that we can't, you know, we can't remain imprisoned in a way into our assumptions. We need to keep an open mind into making them work for the project and the company and the context. And so the best way to do that is training, training, training. Please do not fall under the assumption that advanced work packaging is just packaging work. That's not what it is. And the best way to start there is read a lot of free resources that we publish. Uh, Concord invests into weekly publication and a quarterly publication that is open, free. It has a lot of the knowledge about advanced work packaging. So read about it and also get trained and get your teams trained so that you do not assume things about advanced work packaging. And as a matter of fact, I'd like to share with you some of the lessons learned here. And I'm, um, we'll leave about, you know, then open up for questions. But the very first lesson learned is that you will not get it right the first time uh, because this is not a pass and fail concept. And no two implementations are the same, although there are standards and there, you know, we build a standard methodology. But you, during your first implementation, you will make mistakes. The team will make mistakes. You will adjust. And that's what, what debottlenecking is for. That's what we do. Um, and you will learn a lot, you know, a lot of lessons. The key is to implement those lessons and doing better on the next project and the next and the next. Uh, another lesson learned is make sure you have management and executive buy-in. If you're a project control individual and we receive those requests that would like to introduce the advanced work packaging into your project, um, you know, the, the numbering structure alone is not going to make it you need the management to be on board with this and even senior leadership to be on board with it. Um, and the very first place to start is training. And as a matter of fact, when we do the training, we always get management involved and we also provide training to executives about advanced work packaging. Um, the other element that I'd like to mention in lessons learned is timing. Timing is critical. Uh, many AWP implementations fail because they start too late. And I've mentioned this already. And then the final one is really working with contractors. Um, uh, your, the intent is crucial in a way. So, um, you know, the intent is crucial because advanced work packaging is not meant to be a contractual penalty. Um, it's really important that you get everybody on board with it and uh, see the benefit for them, what's in it for them, and get everyone to improve and succeed in that project. Step two, uh, consider, uh, dependent on your case, a maturity assessment where you would look basically at the planning, engineering, construction, and collaboration elements. And I would mention that uh, an ideal maturity assessment should look at all areas of organizational and project delivery capacity beginning well before AWP is adopted. And that's your best way actually to make things happen. Um, now, I'm going to just add one key element around the maturity assessment and, you know, most, most companies uh, and most people inside the companies adopting advanced work packaging, uh, those leaders or let's say those champions, they could be anybody. Uh, there is no standard fun function to actually being a champion of advanced work packaging. 
You could be either, you know, a leader, a sponsor, a manager, but you could also be a scheduler inside the company or a construction supervisor or a procurement specialist. But you have that, let's say, um, feedback and that qualitative view uh, looking into your organization and you are able to articulate, you know, let's say qualitatively, okay, uh, that, okay, this could fit into our system. That's all it takes really for the champion to identify and start the conversation around this internally. Then when we move forward to a formal maturity assessment, that actually tends to help identify some of those gaps in a formal, of course, and expert methodology. But that is a good place to start to actually have the right conversation about which pilots to start with, uh, which processes to upgrade first, what are the prerequisites we need, and are we well placed to succeed in the advanced work packaging implementation? Now, I will definitely mention that um, one of the, you know, as a company, we're, we're, uh, we, we have experts in change management, we are certified in change management, and we pay too much attention to what actually hinders success. And I can tell you from experience, um, uh, there is nothing that undermines a transformation or an advanced work packaging implementation than leadership saying that they're on board with it, but not acting uh, on what they say. And so it is very important sometimes to just go through this maturity assessment and um, become convinced basically of the case for advanced work packaging. Now this covers my presentation, I hope in a short period of time, I literally like summarized two days worth of detailed training into an hour. Uh, I hope this gives you a flavor and some of the key concepts around advanced work packaging. And I'll start, you know, I'll open up with questions right now. Um, and one thing for sure is, you know, if we have too many questions, we'll follow up with you with answers um, if we, you know, if, if the time exceeds. Thank you. Thank you all for your insights. We do have a number of questions. Uh, a couple of people want to know if you could please detail what constitutes engineering slip. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. So I'm sure those who ask the questions are the, um, I guess, the benchmarking people or the, or the people that, you know, pay attention to timing. So engineering slip is, in simple terms, it's the difference between your detailed engineering duration, planned and actual. Uh, now, that's one, one, one metric of looking at things. Let's say I planned engineering to take, uh, I'm just saying, okay, four months. And then we ended up having executing engineering in five months. Then I have one month of engineering slip. Now, in the way we look at the metrics associated with engineering within the advanced work packaging system, we actually built in metrics uh, that correlate uh, the various, the individual engineering work packaging um, uh, timelines. So the, the, the dates, the dates and the time associated with the delivery of EWPs, actual and planned. And then we correlate that with the need for construction. So there is actually a, a sort of a lead time between an EWP and a CWP. And we measure the impact in a little bit, you know, a more complex formula. But overall engineering slip is the duration between engineering um, as planned versus um, the actual performance. Thank you. Um, and then another person had a question related to the changes that are happening today. Uh, they said, there seems to be a high risk of AWP success due to the variability and unpredictability in the supply chain. What are your thoughts on adjusting AWP for this risk? That's, a, that's an excellent question, especially with the situation right now going on with COVID-19. Uh, one of the key areas that we see disruption uh, happening in is supply chain. But I have to say that... Um, the advantage of adopting the advanced work packaging system and within that aligning procurement with the path of construction, it's really, it's, it's, so predict, it's really acting on predictability. So at the end of the day, what is predictability, right? So for me, and you know, I got this definition from one of the project managers um, that we helped implement advanced work packaging with. He just told me, he said, predictability is knowing the issues on time and acting within a time that could, we could mitigate or reduce the impact of those issues. So he's basically telling me predictability is not just being on time and on budget, no. It's really knowing the issues when I can take an action. And so when it comes to supply chain disruption, uh, what, 
at the end of the day, what any project leadership would want to know and any procurement team would want to know is the impact of that disruption on the project construction, even one, two years down the road, but I know that impact and I can make adjustment and I can make informed decisions about what that means for my project. And investor packaging actually enables that. That's the tie between engineering and construction and procurement because that, that it's like a, it's like a well-rounded you know, machine in a way um, that you move one piece, you know what the, the other pieces will, will be, and you, know, you look at that in a granular way. Um, and so, yes, there is disruption, there is definitely delay. Uh, the unpredictability of which is really uh, through the advanced work packaging system is going to be more of a understanding that delay and being able to make a, an informed decision about it. Thank you, Ofla. And one thing as I've learned more about AWP with you um, is that this system is about being intuitive and, and leadership is really a big part of, of doing this well. And so understanding that you need to be intentional and you need to make uh, the right reactions depending on what's going on is a super valuable insight to, to many of us today. Another question is, uh, what is the appropriate level of AWP elaboration needed during front end engineering? And what are the deliverables needed to achieve that level of AWP elaboration? Um, excellent question. I like it when people ask about feed uh, definition and, def and early definition, because that means that the logic behind or the underlining logic is that this is an investment and we wanna do the proper level of definition and detail. As a matter of fact, let me say, I mean, in the industry, okay, I mean, like for decades, we created feed packages, we built construction plans. Uh, we have, you know, a document called construction strategy. We have constructability notes. It's all there, but you know, what, what's, I mean, what's, the, what's the, the issue with that? And that AWP actually solves. It's the issue of actually the level of detail, the connectivity of all of the pieces into a single uh, strategic construction plan but also the buy-in of everybody and the input of everybody and all the stakeholder, stakeholders into that. So to answer this question, the main deliverable there in the feed package is the path of construction. It's a formal deliverable. So it's not a, you know, a, um, a, an assumed deliverable or just the plot plan with the, draw, with the, with the areas in there. It is a formal document. Um, as a matter of fact, within, I mean, this is our philosophy within Concord. We believe that the path of construction is more important for the project success than the PEP, than the project execution plan. Uh, it's, the, it's the skeleton of the project. The level of detail is, the idea is, it's, I mean, the trick all is really about defining those areas or defining the early breakdown that makes sense for your type of construction. Obviously, if you're doing high-rise building construction, it's going to be a little bit different than if you're doing a, um, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're doing some revamp work on a uh, petrochemical site. It's different. But uh, the idea is in that very early uh, granular definition of the areas and then the respecting of the breakdown of disciplines within those areas um, down the road. Well, I would say that I've actually done a lot of those, um, you know, prior to starting Concord, I was doing these audits on the packages uh, at, uh, you know, at full funds authorization. And um, I, I always like try to tend to approach projects in terms of risk. So I would look at a project and say, okay, what's the, you know, would I bet my money on this project or not? And I can tell you that, you know, from the, the experience that Concord has been doing, helping clients implement advanced work packaging and predictability thinking, um, I, I don't spend too much time on the rest of the packages. As a matter of fact, I just pick the path of construction. I see the effort that was put into making that, defining that, the people that provided input to it, the interactive planning, how it was. And then, you know, um, and then that, that is a pretty solid indicator about whether the project is gonna make it on time and on budget. And then from there, um, in our industry, we have really competent people. So we have competent schedulers. They build very good schedules. Um, you know, uh, they you know, have competent estimators. They build really solid estimates. Uh, you know, we have really, really good competent people in our industry. We have very good engineers. Uh, they build very good engineering packages. 
um, what they're missing really is the input in, and that's what the path of construction does. Fantastic. Uh, do you think we have time for one more question? Okay, go ahead. Okay. So people and individuals can be very powerful in this system. And so someone asked an important question about what the key capabilities of a workplace planner need to be. What do they need to be proficient in um, to be a good workplace planner? Excellent question. Um, I'll mention a number of things. Uh, first of all, let's talk about the, the position of a workplace planner. So historically into the industry, this has been what I would call an assumed position. An assumed position or an assumed function is basically when we assume somebody is gonna do the job of workplace planning when we don't have resources doing it. Um, and because of that, um, and you know, just for those who maybe, I, I don't think I have touched on this, a workplace planner is the, the person who prepares the installation work packages into the field. He coordinates with the various departments. He collects the various uh, information, um, you know, and he, his job is to facilitate uh, basically construction execution. So on-site execution. The workplace planner is a person who uh, supports uh, the construction team in the field. Uh, he may sit in the field or he may be in the office. Um, both are fine, uh, but he doesn't make, a, you know, he doesn't make the, the construction decisions though. So it is still the construction manager's, um, you know, um, role to decide what's go what goes on with the, with the site and with the with construction. Uh, what the workplace planner does is that he actually, so he prepares those packages in a sort of a backlog so that the look ahead plan basically gets executed in a really good fashion. So in a way it's a support function, but it requires two things. So it requires a minimum understanding of construction. So uh, I would discourage people from having uh, workplace planners that do not understand a little bit of construction. They don't have to be, you know, really like into 20 or 30 years of experience into construction. As a matter of fact, I don't think that's needed. Uh, I encourage actually clients based on what, you know, what we think um, to get people, let's say out of school who have had training into construction, who understand safety uh, and who are quite, uh, let's say, um, uh, good in terms of using uh, technology. So basic technology where they could navigate, um, you know, various systems, they could understand access uh, various databases. Uh, they're proactive, um, they're communic communicative, so they reach out to the two people, they, they're very much into, they're comfortable with coordination as well. So these are some of the soft skills in a way, uh, in addition to just a minimum level of understanding of construction and a minimal, min minimal knowledge with basic technology tools. Uh, they don't need like certifications in major softwares or things like that, that's not needed. If you get those people, um, I, you know, um, they tend to be really excellent support uh, and doing that job very quickly. The good thing about that, and you know, I'm a, you know, I always encourage people. I mean, we have a we have a generational gap issue in our industry. You know, where um, we're having an issue attracting um, more and more talent. We're, you know, we're we're having issues also with transfer of knowledge. It takes years and years to become competent into certain types of construction and. When people retire, you know, we, we have less, uh, you know, less experienced people. Workplace planning is actually a really, really good position to build that mentorship uh, and transfer of knowledge when it comes to field construction and field expertise, especially on existing sites where a lot of the knowledge is not documented and it's really into the heads of those, you know, those construction people who understand the site in and out, you know? So, so yeah, some of the competencies, as I mentioned, uh, understand a minimum level of understanding of construction, definitely understanding safety, coordination, uh, and um, you know, and, uh, basically, you know, um, yeah, um, being a, pro a proactive member of of the team. So a lot of soft skills are needed for that for that kind of work. Perfect. Um, thank you, Olfa, and to everyone. We went up to the last minute trying to answer all of your questions. I have recorded your questions and we will see what we can do about getting answers to those questions. So uh, we cannot express how grateful we are for your decision to attend this webinar. We have people from Egypt, Germany, Argentina, the United States, 
Brazil, London, um, this Montreal, Canada. So obviously this was a very global webinar. Um, we appreciate your time. The recording for this talk will be available on demand and you will be receiving an email with the resources we discussed. If you're interested in our training services, site-based project supports, um, site-based project support, uh, company services and, program and programs, or you would like to find out more about our AWP Champion Certification Program, you can send us an email to info at tconglobal.com. I'm going to share that in the chat, info at tconglobal.com. There we go. Uh, here, info at tconglobal.com, and we'll be happy to connect with you. Please make sure you include your name, organization, and the help that you need. So that wraps up today's webinar. Ulfa and I, uh, we'd like to thank you for your time and sharing your expertise. And to everyone, have a great day. We hope you join us for the next Concord Academy web webinar.